In cold case news, DNA from a coffee cup has linked a golfer to a decades-old violent sexual assault case on courses in two different states. So some of these cold cases are becoming resolved now through DNA testing because DNA, you know, wasn't available at the time. And some of this information was sitting around in databases. And sometimes every once in a while, you know, someone's DNA pops up and it's like, oh yeah, we can clear out these old cases. So DNA has apparently resolved decades old sexual assault cases in two different states. Here apparently is a guy who committed sexual assault in golf cases in, in different jurisdictions. On September the 6th of 1999, a 22-year-old woman was working at a food stand at the Twin Lakes Golf Club in Michigan. An unknown male entered the employee-only restricted area and apparently violently assaulted the young woman. The suspect took off but left DNA behind. DNA was uploaded to CODIS, but there was no match at the time. Nine months later, a 19-year-old woman was jogging near the 18th hole of Blue Course in Pennsylvania when she was approached by a man who had asked if she had a Band-Aid in new directions of the clubhouse. The young woman told the man she couldn't help him and tried to continue jogging, but the man held a knife to her throat and dragged her off. The woman told the police the man punched her and then sexually assaulted her. The suspect demanded the woman keep quiet and took off, leaving his DNA at the scene. In 2004, CODIS linked the DNA from the 1999 case to the 2000 rape case, but no specific match could be made. So these DNA is uploaded into the FBI database and it's just sitting around waiting for a match to happen. In two separate press statements last week, investigators confirmed that in 2021, Penn State Police Department began working with Oakland County to see if they could nail down suspects using advanced DNA technology. Detectives partnered with an organization which does next generation DNA mapping. Genero genealogy results narrowed down the DNA to three potential suspects, all of whom were brothers. So they did some genealogy related DNA testing and DNA matching and was able to narrow, narrow it down to three potential people. Then from there, they started investigating the individual brothers and narrowed it down to their suspect. At the time of the Michigan assault, court documents show that the individual that they think did it lived near the Twin Lakes golf course and was potentially visiting their brother who attempted Penn, Penn, Penn State. So they're like, okay, this is probably our guy. DNA extracted from a styrofoam coffee cup he'd been drinking out of did the match. So, so once they were able to figure out who their guy was, they probably presumably followed him around until he disposed of something. They could DNA test. He abandoned it. And so they did the DNA testing off this abandoned styrofoam cup. And it's like, okay, if that's a match. So now we know our guy. In Michigan, the individual has been charged with first and second degree felony criminal assault. In Pennsylvania, he'll be charged with felony counts of sexual assault and aggravated indecent assault. Oakland County Sheriff says that the individual involved is an avid golf golfer and has golfed around the country and so potentially has assaulted other people in other jurisdictions. So now presumably his DNA might match other people in other places or maybe based on ML or other factors we can tie him to other places. So the investigation in some senses is only just beginning, but the charges against him are quite serious in multiple different jurisdictions. So I don't think it's going to end well for him in any case. Thus, that brings us to the end of the story of this guy who committed sexual assaults in at least two different courses, golf courses, in 1999 and 2000, and probably other times too, one would imagine. And the DNA was in a database for a long time, and then as DNA testing got better and better, we were able to do genealogical testing that able, enabled us to narrow it down to the family line. And then from there, we were able to figure out probably which guy it is and then able to collect DNA from a, from a styrofoam cup 
to figure out, okay, this is our guy. And now he's arrested and facing charges in Michigan with charges in Pennsylvania, presumably soon to follow. And one would imagine charges in other jurisdictions as well, because it's probably not the only two times he, he assaulted a woman near a golf course. So, you know, DNA testing coming to bring some of these people to account finally, which is justice at last. And that, for the moment, brings to the end of discussion of this case.